we are on Duat. All right, so very uh, similar uh, to Berg as far as, you know, the, the fact that there's all these natural choke points around player starting points. Um, starting points are on the north and south pole. Uh, and you get a lot of free metal on this map. Um, you know, you've got five here, two here, three here, and they're all within this uh, choked off area. Um, there's also uh, a lot of forest on this map. Um, so uh, sending out a, a combat fabricator or something to go and uh, reclaim uh, all of these trees uh, is a common tactic on this map. Uh, gives yeah, you a lot I've of early that, metal income. Yeah, I've heard it's very efficient to do that. And... Tree economy, I think, is what they call it. Yeah, I, I haven't tried it too much, so I don't know. Probably gives um, a lot of advantage since it's 50 metal for a, for a second, so that's a lot. Yeah, but actually this, uh, yeah, so maybe you go have the introduction. Uh, for the... Yeah, yeah, here we go. Um, players have dropped in. In yellow we have Zephus, starting by the South Pole. And at the North Pole in orange, we have Headcrab. So head grab looks like he's gonna go vehicle first. Uh, Zephus opting to go bot first. Uh, That's very interesting. Uh, that's very interesting. On this map, uh, uh, you have t uh, like uh, two styles of gameplay. If you open with bots, then you try to get uh, as much map control as possible um, early on. But uh, obviously, but with tanks, you try to um, you try to uh, get the triangle as fast as possible, and then you um, you try to uh, secure the entrances, and then you slowly uh, get uh, you do the punch with tanks uh, for, on on one side. So um, uh, well, it, not, it it probably might look like that. So the guy with the uh, bots has advantage early on with uh, probably a little bit of more metal, but then once the uh, the player with tanks gets more comfortable um, with the uh, Securing those entrances, uh, then he might uh, do the very strong push that it's uh, um, pretty hard to counter. So um, then he has. Um, well, actually, actually, here, uh, <laughs> Air Faber down just got the missile off right before he died and managed to take out Head Crab's Air Faber. I missed that. I was so excited to talk about strategies right there. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, but we have uh, actually Headcraft. Uh, he's doing some, something a little bit different. Uh, he decides to um, to take to use those tanks to secure those entrances and then proceed with uh, a lot of uh, air units. So he will try to uh, use um, the fact that tanks um, give him say um, a reasonable safety early on, and then he will try to claim uh, probably. Uh, um, air dominance, and then through this way, he will try to um, get more metal. You'll see, though, there's a bomber who takes out two engineers. That's very huge. Oh, I missed it. I was looking at Headcrab's side of the map. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's interesting that uh, Headcrab decided to do uh, an air fabric because, like you said, when you go tanks, the the typical you know the typical way that you run tanks is you you kind of stay in your little triangle area for a while and then you know slowly start to push out where if you see somebody go air fabers it's usually because you want to try to claim all the metal on the map as quickly as possible but when you're going up against somebody that's already going heavy into bots um all you're doing is is placing metal extractors uh, up for for your opponent to just run some bots in and destroy yeah, he was. I think he was just trying to be sneaky. That uh, he was hoping that op his opponent uh, he would make some four, maybe for uh, metal extractor somewhere, and then his opponent would not notice this, and and he would have a really nice advantage early on. But um, there is very interesting thing that Zap is, is doing. He is uh, using transport to uh, get. Um, Metal extra and um, tr transport his uh, fabricator out on the map, and then he tries to uh, get metal. Yeah, it's an interesting um, tactic, trying to get very his... Good. Uh, it's actually very, very smart. Yeah, trying to take his, his bot fabbers out quickly to, to go take the uh, the metal in the middle of the map, which is really plentiful right in this area. Um, so it's, yeah, although, it, it'll be although, very highly contested. I think it's um, it's it's quite a huge mistake that he's not trying to take uh, those four metal spots in his base um, uh, to retake them. Uh, once uh, he lost uh, those from the bomber, uh, he's just now getting fabricator there, and it seems like uh, yeah, in in on uh, Hydecrab on his side of the map uh, already has all the metal. 
instructor. So that feels like uh, it should be an uh, advantage for him, but it's actually not because of this uh, transport trick with uh, making four extractors out on the map. So um, in terms of economy, they are uh, very even right now, which is great because uh, that usually means that the game will be very close. Zephus with a uh, quite a few more fabbers than uh, than headcrab. Looks like he's putting more of his effort into expanding and getting uh, metal extractors down as quickly as possible. Which yeah, even with running the, all those fabbers, mm -hmm. it's kind of surprising that headcrab has managed to uh, to you know keep the the uh, metal economy pretty close between the two. Yeah, as I said, um, uh, Zephus still doesn't have the metal in his triangle, but uh, once he does. Then he might uh, he might really have advantage. It looks like a uh, a pretty pretty decent sized group of tanks pushing out from Hebcrab's side. Going to try to pick off some of these uh, undefended metal extractors from Zephus. Try to pull the uh, the metal uh, economy back closer to even. Looks uh, like yeah, there's a and... bot push coming in from Zaphis, encountering a couple of mm -hmm. tanks. Manages to take them out pretty easily. We see where he uh, decides to send these bots. Looks like he's going to send them into Headcrab's base, and if they come around the that side of that rock, they're going to find a whole lot of tanks waiting for them. Yeah, so that's going to be death, uh, most likely for them. Uh, yeah. But uh, I would I would like to emphasize on um, uh, the fact that Zephyrus is moving his commander uh, to the uh, to this area uh, with uh, uh, a lot of metal. Uh, that's very important, and that's something uh, I I I think I might have started doing. To follow it because it's uh, very important to um, use commander as a um, as a weapon as well because uh, you can build stuff with. Uh... Oh yeah. Yeah, commander has a lot of HP and a lot of uh, um, damage output, so it's very important to use that. So yeah, he it's... now most likely might break this position. Although there are two turrets which are very good, so we'll see about that. Yeah, looks like a he's. Uh... Zaphis is pushing his tanks out to encounter these uh, tanks from Head Crab, trying to take out the center area, like you were saying. Uh, Commander pushing out. We'll see how successful of a push this is. Looks like he gets down a metal extractor, takes out all the tanks, but begins running into turrets, which are going to start picking off these tanks little by little. Yeah, I think Commander should be leading such charge, and he would just... Yeah, potentially. Aggressively... Although that... That carries a risk. I mean, yeah, it's it's great to push out with your commander because it it gives you a lot of uh, a lot of force in a in an area and um, enables you to try to lock down an area. But it also puts your commander at great risk of you know uh, bomber snipes or uh, bomb bots. Yeah, I totally agree. But uh, uh, risk uh, is necessary in yeah, absolutely um, in in RTS games. So you have to um, well in, in StarCraft we call that calculated risk. So he is indeed risking it a little bit. But when you know when a situation gets uh, slightly too hot, he just should retreat um, and scout uh, to know when she, he should retreat. Yeah, agreed. And especially on a map like this, oh. Oh, I don't think Headcrab saw those three bots there. Oh, nope, he's turning his bomber around. You can take them all out in one bomb pass right here. And, oh, takes out two of them. Comes back for another pass and takes out a third bot from Zaphis. There's quite a big attack uh, in the uh, Zaphis base, I'm wondering. How, uh, what uh, would those tanks do? They have potential to snipe a metal extractor or two, but he's not moving them, so... No, I think he was focused somewhere else. He's got another group of tanks coming in behind them. Yeah, he's he's got enough force here. Like you said, he could probably take down a metal extractor or whatever, but it looks like Zaphis is moving forces to counter this, and he's got enough in his base to, to, to stall out this attack. Yeah, it feels like uh, Headcrab has more units, and it feels um, he can, he can uh, use them to, to get map control and get metal. I, uh, yeah, when we look at mobile count, so... Yeah, Headcrab definitely has the, the uh, mobile unit advantage. Yeah, I think it's because um, <clears throat> uh, Zephyrus had so many fabricators early on. Yeah, he's also putting Headcrab. down a lot of the defenses. Um, he's got a lot of factories going. Um, he's got 16 factories to Headcrab's 12. Which is odd because he's got more factories, but he he doesn't have the unit count advantage. 
Yeah. Uh, well, maybe it's also because of uh, um, the fact that he uh, used his commander uh, for um, for an attack instead of uh, making stuff uh, with right. him. Yeah, we can see Headcrab just massing more and more tanks uh, right outside or right on the inside of Zaphis' base. Looks like Zaphis has gotten tired of it. He's moving his tanks forward just to clean up all of Headcrab's tanks. Yeah, and... I think it's uh, such attack from Headcrab is uh, quite a b big mistake because yeah. you don't really want to attack someone's base because um, units take like one minute to move from one base to another. So you rather want to use your army to gain map control and make it uh, and keep it alive instead of uh, rushing into someone's base because there will be com uh, fact, uh, tanks coming out of factory. Uh, so. Uh, the defender, defender's advantage is really huge, so it's not really good to attack someone in the base so early, I think. Yeah, I think that that was definitely a mistake by Headcrab. Uh, he either needed to commit there and, and you know try to take out a factory or something while he had his units there, or he needed to pull out. Um, having them just sit there and get and die needlessly is, is could come back to hurt him. Yeah, exactly. Look, uh, in mobile count, Zephyrus is starting to pull out ahead. He has um, uh, five units more right now, so he had advantage, and he could, and, and now, uh, and he could use it to keep his uh, um, uh, metal extractors alive. And right now, Zephyrus is doing huge push with a lot of tanks, and there is nothing that can stop it from uh, headcrab. So he's gonna lose uh, quite a bit of uh, metal very oh, soon. Oh, headcrab oh. realizing that there is a definite lack of any sort of anti-air presence in Zaphis's base, just going to town, taking out metal extractor after metal extractor, unopposed. There's no spinners. Looks like uh, Zaphis is quickly trying to put down an anti-air turret. Um, he's got uh, he's got fighters building out of his air factories to try to stop this, but. Yeah, the headcrab's Actually, gonna go ahead and pull out uh, before he able he's able to get those off. Oh man, Faber's going game, down. Game ending damage. That's a lot of damage. Yeah, that that's hurting wow, really wow. badly. Yeah, look, uh, Zephyr has twice uh, less metal right now than headcrab. Yeah, that that hurts, and Faber is still going down. Spinner finally comes out. It's taking out some Fabers. Looks like headcrab is gonna go ahead and uh, leave those units be. Yeah, he loses his last bomber. Uh, Zephyr, sorry, uh, pushing out with some tanks. They're getting picked off by bombers one by one. Uh, this is not Head looking good for again. Zephyr at all. It's pulling out massively ahead. It's 50 units more, so I don't think he can recover from that. That was such a huge damage. And right now he will focus on uh, rebuilding metal. Uh, and he's doing very slow, uh, this very slowly again. So he, he needs to do it very fast if he, if he wants to have, uh, have any chances. But uh, and more I don't Fabers think he just has any. Dying to Headcrab's bombers. Um, if, if Zaphis can't get some air control back, he's, he's going to be in, in the same spot as, uh, as you know, the, the, the guy from last game, where he can't move out any fabrics to expand at all because the bombers just chew him apart. Uh, looks like a, a group of tanks from Zaphis going out to try to pick off some of these metal extractors from Headcrab to try to, try to pull back in this. Um, Headcrab does have some point defenses here, um, but not enough to stop these, this many tanks. So it looks like um, Headcrab's going to start losing some metal extractors out here on the outskirts if he doesn't do anything to protect them. Oh, looks I like think... looks like the two commanders are getting close to meeting here in the middle. <laughs> That's actually not bad. I think he needs to. Uh, he should realize that he is in very bad shape right now. So uh, all he should do is just do one all-in attack uh, and and try to snipe his commander in his base. If he moved all the units right there, he might have uh, still uh, some chances. But yeah, so head... his commander is slightly unprotected. Yeah, headcrab's got enough produ unit production in his base though that he can just start spitting out units to, to counter the number of tanks that Zaphis has yeah, uh, sitting out I here agree, with his commander. But, yeah, I agree, but he's got to do something. Yeah, exactly. That's like uh, He still would have tiny chance for success, maybe, if, if Headcrab messes things up somehow. And yeah. right now, uh, he will doesn't do that, it's nothing will really happen. He will just yep. get steamrolled. Head so he would have is... to do all-in attack to, to maybe, maybe think, uh, maybe figure out something. 
Yeah, Head Crab's got a pretty big mass of tanks uh, moving into the former base of Zaphis, just cleaning up all these factories, metal extractors, fabrers just dying left and right. Um, yeah, this As this game is pretty much base. over uh, unless Zaphis pulls something out here, like, miraculously. Exactly. We, we see a pretty uh, pretty good air fleet coming from Head Crab. I don't think it's quite enough bombers to take out the uh, the commander quite yet, but it's definitely enough to go out here and start uh, punishing some factories. Yeah, wow, these bombers actually are really good. Uh, and uh, I think it's about 10, it's maybe even less. Yeah, so... Yeah, Zaphis, to... all of Zaphis's factories and stuff are just getting cleaned up here. Um, yep. If he doesn't push in soon and do something, um, he's not going to have any units left to do anything with, and he'll just have to GG it. Yeah, as I said, he he um, he is doing what I said to to uh, do the uh, attack, but uh, it's it's too late. He should have done it like uh, two minutes uh, earlier, maybe. Then he would uh, maybe have a chance. But right now, uh, like he should immediately, as soon as he knows that there's no chances for winning uh, with macro play, when he loses those metal extractors, he, he should have go with the uh, commander uh, straight to his base, to his opponent base. Yeah, agreed. Um, he he had at least earlier he had the element of surprise. Um, Headcrab may not have known that the commander was sitting over there, um, but. You know, now now that Headcrab knows that the commander's there and has known for a while, he's just been able to sit there and mass units in his base and just kind of prepare for the inevitable push from Zaphis. Um, you know, if, if Zaphis had pushed in, he may have been able to ca catch him by surprise and, and you know, do, put down some decent damage. Um, I still don't think he would have won, but it, it would have been a, a much uh, more devastating attack. Now he has also turrets uh, coming, so well, that's, he's gonna just get steamrolled, right? Yeah, the the few units that he has massing around the commander, trying to shield it from damage, while the commander puts out uber cannons and and shots, trying to take out these these units. Head crab just squeezing in with all of his units, focusing on the commander. Those are the last moments of Zephyr in this tournament, probably. That's right, and here comes the bombers for the one pass. GG, that was a very good game, I think. Uh, it was quite, quite an interesting match. So. Yep, yep, yep. And I forgot to unmute PA, that's my bad. I was wondering where all the sound was, that's my bad. Alright, so should we review this match real quick? I think so. Alright, let's, let's go back. Let's see, early on. Not quite that early. Yeah, it was interesting. I found it interesting that uh, Head Crab, like I said, the, the air faber kind of threw me. Um, the air faber did not last long, though. <laughs> it didn't even get a chance to build a single thing, but it, it was kind of interesting that he decided to go with that first. Yeah, he was trying to be sneaky. Uh, there are, like, uh, th there are chances that someone might not notice this. Uh, it's not really likely with uh, good players because they always scout all the uh, whole planet all the time, basically. So it's kind of a trick. It, it's actually in, in a, it's actually insult to Zephyrus. Uh, like you do that when you, <laughs> you do that when you think your opponent is bad. So uh, that might might have been this way. Yeah. I would yeah, it interpret be. it like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, so early on, like, it looked like, you know, Zaphis was in it, like, you know, it, until mm -hmm. until the bomber started really doing damage from Head Crab, like, it looked like Zaphis was definitely, Zaphis, rather, was definitely in this game. But yeah, once but he started look, losing Fabers mm -hmm. and stuff, it just, it started going downhill for him. Yeah, yeah, these Fabers, were, there were too many of Fabers, I think, but uh, it, so, I think there was some, I, I, I kind of, um, uh, what I said early, kind of made sense, because uh, those bots didn't really do anything right there. Um, he, uh, like, uh, because he made those bots, he didn't have enough tanks. I mean, uh, Zephyrus uh, made those bots and then uh, he didn't have enough tanks to defend uh, from uh, from uh, headcrab pushes. So, uh, that's, uh, that's, 
like you want to get bots early on to do some harassment and here you didn't really do that so later on when you get just tanks versus bots they don't uh, they it's much better to have tanks so um so headcrab just played it pa patiently uh, pa patiently early on and he didn't really um get any anything damage he didn't get any damage and then uh, he just proceeded to get uh, nice map control with those tanks and and uh, to, to dominate. Yeah, and I, I do agree, you know, pushing out with the commander at this point uh, from Zaphis was definitely the right call. Um, you know, he needed the economy, he needed to try to uh, get a foothold uh, where he could put down some metal extractors and kind of keep control of them. But yeah, he just didn't, he didn't leave enough of a force back in his main base. Um, and just Headcrab was able to roll in and just start, you know, start putting down damage and start uh, you know taking out all the economy that Zaphis had already built up um, and yeah, just and at, started at, losing at, it at seven at seven minute mark uh, he moves out four and engineers out on the map to try to get metal that's way way too much headcrap is doing it right he just gets one faber and and then a lot of tanks to cover and um, and and Zaphis, he, he just um, sent four um, four fabers and then he covered it with 20 bots, but bots are pretty bad against tanks. So, so he didn't manage. Yeah, I think uh, at the back, that's that's kind of the deciding point, uh, a little bit as well. Uh, at 7:50, at the opposite side of the planet from the where commander was, um, he uh, he did a push with uh, with tanks, and and then uh, and Zafis had nothing to hold uh, uh, to. Yeah. yeah. Well. The head grab pulled out the head. Very well played match by Headcrab. So he will move ahead to play Dreadnought.